This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Your war room for insider news and draft analysis from deep within the confines of Cowboys headquarters at the Star in Frisco. The Dallas Cowboys select Tyler Smith. And now, your host, Kyle Yeomans. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, as we are 35 days away from the NFL draft in Kansas City. We are a month away this week you ain't from nothing. the draft. <laughs> you ain't nothing. I'm just saying we're a month away. And you awesome. know what that means? It's time to do some mock drafting. We're going to put a full 32, now I guess 31 pick, first round draft together. Thank you, Miami, for that one. And we're going to do that over the next hour here on the Draft Show presented by Miller Lite. As always, we've got Brian Broaddus, Zach Wolchuk, Aisha Morrison. No Bobby Belt today, unfortunately. He's still got morning show duties. We did have to go a little bit earlier today, but we are ready to roll. Got our coffee in, and we are excited to get drafting. Everybody, how we doing? Doing great. Thank you. Are you taking notes over there? Yeah, I'm getting ready to go. You, I'm yeah. getting ready to roll. He's you ready. got your general, general I'm gonna, manager I'm gonna throw, hat on. I'm going to throw some curveballs at you today. Is this supposed to be Ooh. fast? No, we can talk about it. We just got to make sure that we, we get, make so sure we we get all the picks. picks you got to get okay. them all yeah. in. At least you got to get to 26. We got to get to 26. You got to get to 26. <laughs> or this is not going to be a good show. No. Oh, okay, okay. I ain't going to waste y'all time. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good idea. So we have this divided up, and we have it. Well, basically, I drew names out of a hat, and it happened to be in order. So it was it was a clockwise <laughs> order, and it just worked out that way. Uh, we had Bobby with the first overall pick, and unfortunately, he's not here. So we're going to divide his picks up. Oh, Jesus. So we'll f- split it into fives, I guess. I mean, every, every four picks, we'll have somebody else take the selection. We're going to give Aisha Morrison. The number one overall pick. Your first ever draft show mock draft selection. Who do you take with the Carolina Panthers? Number one overall. Oh. 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 Barnacles. You got some quarterbacks on the board. I Yeah. I mean, I feel like the obvious answer is, is the guy that they seem very fond of right now, and that's Anthony Richardson from Florida. Ooh. I love it. You're going to take him first overall? I mean, I... I don't know if it's going to be correct to everybody else, but they seem, from me scrambling and creeping on them, they seem interested in him. Okay. I agree. I think that that might be the uh, quarterback that that they're going to end up with. Okay. You think so? Yeah, I do. You don't even think they might take, you know, another guy? I think Stroud is a consideration here. The the, the, the fact of the contingency that they sent – But they're going to send the same contingency to Bryce Young, and they're probably going to do the same thing for Richardson. They're going to do it for all these quarterbacks. Mm. It just depends on, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Which McCown is a is a quarterback? Coach? Josh, Josh, Josh. McCown. and Josh McCown was it was like he figured out that C.J. Stroud is a basketball player or likes to hoop it up a little bit, and like when they were meeting, he walked up to him <laughs> and say, "When we get to Carolina, I got a court we can go play yeah, on." When you're in Charlotte, so, so he oh, was yeah, people are running with that one. So people are running that. That was one of those times when you kind of caught the live mic. But, yeah, I, I totally understand what you're talking about. It, it could be any one of these. Like I say, you have rooms that are, you know, you have four players coming out from Carolina talking about, you know, hey, I, you know, it, it, they're going to take a quarterback here. It might not be the one that everybody likes. Thomas mm-hmm. Davis, you know, one of their best players yeah. in the history of the franchise, the former linebacker, saying he thinks it's going to be Anthony Richardson. I think it's Richardson or Stroud. I think that meets the, the size profile that Frank Reich looks for in a quarterback. But I, I think you're onto something. If I had to bet, I, I think Anthony Richardson is their guy. Wow. You're not nervous though. Like, well, devil's advocate for the for the Panthers, do you with what happened with Cam essentially and the engine type of injuries he dealt with, the upper body stuff, just having to work through his mechanics because mm-hmm. he was so much of an athlete. Do you think that they want to do? I mean, I, I mean, I already picked the guy, but I'm just go saying, do you think they want to go through it again? That's a good point because that's a popular comparison between Anthony Richardson and Cam Newton. I'm writing the draft magazine yeah. right now, and that was my comp was you, Cam Newton. I, I think if you were to ask that fan base, you get an MVP and a Super Bowl appearance, they'll run you that take back. It. Yeah. Take it, no yeah. doubt. All right, okay, so the first go. pick, Anthony Richardson. Already a curveball. I thought it was C.J. Stroud. It is a curveball. But, and that, but, but I, I like it. Carolina I like might it. do that. I like it. Brian, you're up with the Texans on two. Yeah, the Houston Texans select Bryce Young, quarterback from Ooh. Alabama, is who the Houston Texans select. I think that when you start to talk about 
you know, they the the Texans need to Nick Cesario, the general manager down there. They need to figure out that spot. They need the most uh, the guy that's the battle tested, ready to play right now. Uh, Young is clearly poised. Uh, he's accurate. He's he's got mobility. He's a leader. Uh, Bryce Young would be a very good selection, I believe, for the Houston Texans. Size doesn't worry you. It's not going to work. I, I'm just picking for the Houston Texans. Okay. I think that they're going to. I think they're just going to look at. They're going to look at him and say there is, you know, he he probably other he has the least amount of holes in him as a quarterback in this draft. I think only with the size. That's the height, and that's I think that's the only issue they're dealing with right now. So a pair of quarterbacks off the board. C.J. Stroud still sticking around here at three, where the Cardinals Cardinals are on the clock, and that is Aisha again. Mm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Who okay. you got? Uh, so the Cardinals, obviously, they, they lost um, J.J. Watt. Mm-hmm. And even with bringing him in when they did, they were looking for edge play. So I think they go with – Will Anderson from Alabama Good pick. to go ahead and shore that up. They also have, um, you know, some new things going on on the defensive side of the ball there. So I feel like they got K- Kazir White they brought in. Like they have some guys they're trying to put around in that defense. So, yeah, he might be the cherry on top. I'll tell you what, I, I did a thing where I looked at, like, mock drafts. 93% of the mock drafts have Will Anderson at this pick. Yeah. Wow. That people believe. And this is from all around the nation, that, you know, all the guys and gals that do these mock drafts. So, I think Will Anderson's an excellent pick there. That edge is the number one need for the uh, Absolutely. Arizona Cardinals. That's number okay. one need, you get the number one edge, take the pick and run with it. Absolutely. Yeah, and this feels like, and this is, we'll go back and forth about it, but like, this is a huge draft, it feels like, for the Cardinals. They're trying to kind of turn the tide, it feels like, with the character of their locker mm-hmm. room. And it sounds like all the character witnesses for Will Anderson say really good things about him. So they, it would be a good way to kind of start for what they're trying to do, it sounds like, from them. I think he's side. a safe pick, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that Will Anderson, when you look at just the overall skill, the talent, I, I think he's a guy that is going to be, at, at worst, maybe he's not an all-pro type of player, which you're hoping for there, but I think he's going to be a starter and be very good for probably a decade plus. He's a cornerstone type of player. All right, so you're in the uh, the Indianapolis yeah. war room. Are y'all doing cartwheels right now? Uh, we're, we're thrilled here yeah. because we got C.J. Stroud and Will Levis. So Both which available. one do we prefer? And in this scenario, I, I, I'm going to go with C.J. Stroud here for the Indianapolis Colts, and it could easily be Will Levis, but I think Stroud's a guy that is really building momentum as this process has gone along. I think he played his best game in his final collegiate performance against Georgia, showed some mobility. I think Shane Steichen, the new head coach there, is going to like that uh, with what he was able to do with Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia last year. I think the Colts are thrilled to get C.J. Stroud here at number four. Mm, Good pick overall, Yeah, and maybe the top quarterback, depending on who you talk to that might be their top quarterback uh that's a huge pick all right with the seahawks at number five via denver they've got a lot of needs they've got a lot of needs they could use some defensive line help they could use some help at the cornerback position they have some young corners they got really they got the probably the steal of the draft last year with tyreek woolen out of utsa he turns into being a, a big time rookie prospect I think I'm going to go with the defensive line here. And I'm going to take the interior monster, Mr. Jalen Carter, out of Georgia. Yes, there are some of the -the off-the-field concerns based off of what happened in Indy, or or I guess while we were in Indy because of the car accident and Mm -hmm. and all that. But I still think he's that good of a player. I think he's still going to go this high. And I'm drafting for the Seattle Seahawks. He's the best player on my board, and he fits a need for Seattle, so I'm making the pick. Jalen Carter, fifth overall to the Seahawks out of Georgia. All right, Bobby's next pick is going to go defaulting to Zach. Zach has the Lions on the clock at sixth overall. Interesting. We need a corner. We need a defensive lineman. This is uh, this is a juicy pick here. Now, where would the Lions go? I think they're going to look at corner, uh, and, and you could also go with – Tyree Wilson, who's sitting yeah. there out of Texas Tech. He's a very intriguing player for me. Pair him up with Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. You have those two bookend defensive ends there, but I do think they've got a need at corner, and they're going to need to slow down Justin Jefferson within their own division. Who do they think is the best in the draft? Personally, I have Joey Porter Jr., but I think they might rock with the athleticism of a Christian Gonzalez here out of Oregon. So I'm going to give them the Colony product 
here in the DFW, Christian Gonzalez, the corner out of Oregon. Is this where we could see a cornerback run here, Brian? Because you're starting you're starting to see a number of teams that don't have those top end prospects. Carter's off the board, Stroud, Anderson, Young, Richardson going all the way back to the number one pick. But now you've got Gonzalez here, Witherspoon, Porter Jr. Could you see a run of corners from six to maybe yeah, well, the, ten or twelve? Yeah, yes. but I think that you know you got to think about you know Vegas could surely use a corner, Atlanta could use a corner. I think they've got some other needs, so yeah. we might see the first one go, but it might be a little bit further down the board when you start to see Porters and others go. Okay, mm-hmm. Raiders are on the clock at seven after Zach pick Christian Gonzalez. You've got. I've got the Vegas the Raiders. Vegas Raiders I got Brian. the Las Vegas Raiders. They might be thrilled here too. Yeah, with a quarterback falling in their lap. Absolutely, they might be thrilled with that. Um, I'm going to say this about the with the with the Raiders. I'm going to go ahead and oh, Anthony Richards. Is this your first curveball? Yeah, this because is the, it's the Raiders. I, I, you never know. I, you know what? I, I do think that they. I do think that they really do with the signing of Jimmy Garoppolo and stuff like that. I think they're. I feel like they. Feel they're okay with that. I think they're going to need some positions here. I'm going to take um, – man, that's hard to go away from him like that. I'm going to throw you a curveball here. I'm going to, I'm going to take the, the Raiders. You mentioned about the run. I'm going to go ahead and pick a – I'm going to pick a cornerback for him here. Mm. I'm going to take uh, Joey Porter here from uh, from Penn State. Mm, I'm nice. going to pass on the – I'm going to pass on the quarterback. And I, they probably feel like they can get that quarterback a little bit later. But I'm going to pass on him and take Joey Porter, the cornerback from Penn State. That's a good pick overall. Where where is he on your board, Zach? In terms of corners, is he's he my number, number one. Two? Oh, he's he's my one. number one corner. Yeah, I, I think Joey too. Porter. Yeah, I, I think Porter's got the best football ahead of him out of, out of this group. I mean, look, he's got the bloodlines, which we've seen really be something that hey, you can't overreact to. I mean, you look at J.C. Horn that's come into the league and had success. Joe Horn's his dad. Yeah, a Patrick Sertan with the Broncos. He's now one of the best corners in football, but I think he's a guy that he can break on the football. Uh, I liked him a lot when I watched him against Purdue. He was making plays on the ball. He can blitz off the edge, can get off blocks in the run game. He's a big physical press corner, has good closing speed, can play off the football. Uh, I think Joey Porter Jr. is a guy that I loved watching him at Penn State. He was the first corner I looked at and was like, this is a complete player. I think you can nitpick other things with a Gonzalez or a Devin Witherspoon, some of the other top guys. But Porter Jr., I, I think he's a really good player. I think they'll like his toughness. I think that's the number one thing about Porter, that they'll they'll appreciate the fact that he's willing to tackle, he's mm-hmm. willing to play a physical side of that game and, uh, and, and get the job done that way. All right, eighth overall, the Falcons are on the clock, and that is Aisha Morrison. That's me. Yeah, that's me. All right, so they have – uh, the Falcons, they have the second most cap space in the league, and they are showing it because they are adding people like crazy. Mm. They got Jesse Bates um, on the defensive side of the ball, um, Mac Hollins as a receiver. They've just been adding guys, Mike Hughes as a corner. Mm-hmm. So uh, you actually took the guy that it sounds like they're most interested in, in uh, Christian Gonzalez and corner. It sounds like creeping on them. It they like, like him quite a yes, bit. Yes, they like him quite a bit. But um, I do think they are also in the business of trying to get a receiver. So I am. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> well, because the their I think the board changed, right? I, right. I would assume it would change a little bit since you since you took their due, one of their dues. So uh, let's go. <laughs> Can the can the first receiver go off the board this year? Absolutely, okay, yeah, you can. Uh, Whatever you want it to be. Mm, I think they're lacking a ver- a vertical threat right now uh, in Atlanta. It sounds like so. Maybe you go with. I'm gonna do Jalen Hyatt from Tennessee. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Okay. It's gonna tick everyone off. Wow! Top like ten, it. Jalen Hyatt. How about that? Mm. First receiver off the board. That's what draft is. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. You never know who these guys like. You never know what these teams want. But Jalen Hyatt is, if you wanted a vertical threat. Well, yeah, I was creeping on. I he's was, your guy. Yeah, I was listening to some of their uh, their media folks and just kind of catching up with their, their Twitter machine and stuff. And it looks like they really are – that's what something they're lacking. And you, saw, you they brought in Tyler Haneke. Um, for this next couple of years, I'm sure they're going to be trying to put some more weapons around them. You got a decent tight end group. You know they like to run the ball. I think they were like third in rushing last year. Mm-hmm. They definitely need more on their receiving side of the ball. Wow, that's a huge curveball. I love it. I love it. All right, the Bears at pick number nine. This was with the pick they got in return for that first overall pick trade. Zach, you're on the clock. 
for me, if I'm Chicago, I'm doing everything I can to just build around Justin Fields here. And you've got a hell of a player in Tyree Wilson that, that I like a lot uh, that they could go with. But I think you need to you need to build along that offensive line. Uh, I like the versatility here of a pick like Peter Skaronsky, who plays yeah. kind of in their backyard there with yeah. North, at Northwestern. You can play him at guard. He might still be able to play tackle. I think that he has that versatility. I think that'd be a good safe pick for the Bears as they mm-hmm. continue to build around Justin Fields. So is that the selection? Yeah, Peter we're going to go with uh, Peter Skaronsky at a Northwestern. I like that pick a lot. And yeah, that's a good pick. The, I like the pick for the Bears. You know who I don't like it for? I don't like it for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. You know why? Why is that? Guess who's coming up next? Oh, the Eagles. At number 10. The Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock. I am representing the Eagles in this scenario, and I'm going to take the best player that's still available on the board, and that's the edge rusher, Tyree Wilson, out of Texas Tech. And he's going to be getting after Dak Prescott. It's annoying. He's going to be getting after this offensive line for years to come. So I'm going to pick Tyree Wilson, 10th overall, to the Eagles, as much as I absolutely hate that. It's, that's the right pick for them to make here. And, uh, yeah, so we'll move on from there. <laughs> Next pick goes to Brian. He's the Tennessee Titans filling in for Bobby. Brian, you were on the clock. Two straight for Mr. Brian. Brian. Yeah, two straight here for the Tennessee Titans are, you know, they, they definitely need offensive line help. They're looking at receivers. They can use interior uh, help as well. Uh, the Tennessee ty- Titans are going to take offensive tackle Paris Johnson Jr. Mm. from uh, Ohio State. Love that. Probably the uh, one of the best tackles on the board right there. So yeah, they they could have gone a couple of different ways. Uh, you know, with the with the thought about the wide receiver there. I mean, with Jackson Smith and Jigba at that point made some sense. Uh, I kind of feel like that uh, that they're they're looking for offensive line help. So Tennessee Titans going to take Paris Johnson. Junior from uh, from Ohio State. There, sure. any consideration for Will Levis? That's kind of what I was about to ask. These wide receivers and Will Levis are yeah. falling a little bit here. I think I think that to, I think that there's there's there was absolute consideration, but I feel like you need to fix this offensive line stuff first. Mm. So that's why I went I went with the the tackle at that. Do you spot. do you stay away from it? I know he he slipped last year in the draft, but they did pick Malik Willis. And they did give him a shot. It did not go well. But do you think it, it, could that provide a little bit of hesitation in order to go and get a quarterback in sure. Tennessee? Yeah, it, it definitely could. Now they got to see him play last year. I thought Willis was a guy that was really raw, super talented player, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he didn't look very good. But it, it could be one of those where hey, they, they seem like they're committed to Ryan Tannehill still, and you can keep developing Willis. So in this situation, I think Johnson's the best offensive tackle in the draft, super athletic. So I, I understand going ahead and adding a cornerstone piece there on the left side. Mm, with the nice. the Houston Texans with the next pick, that's me, right? Yep. Still, mm. they're going to go wide receiver here. This is where Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to come off the board. He's kind of this. We're in that range right now where I think he could potentially start to be considered. So somewhere between 12, 13, 14, somewhere right around there, if you look at how you would stack these guys, okay. match him up with Bryce Young right there, you give a weapon. I think the, I think the, the Texans have hit a home run here in this first round with the two first two picks that they made. So yeah. Jackson Smith and Jigba, wide receiver, Ohio State, uh, to the Houston Texans at 12. Yeah, oh, how God. about that pairing? How about that pairing? Because it's going to be Bryce Young throwing the ball to Jackson Smith and Jigba for years for that Houston team. I think you're doing backflips in Houston if yeah. you're able to make that happen. Get the best receiver in the draft there at 12. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, Aisha is back on the clock. She has the New York Jets at pick number 13. Bunch of ways the Jets could go. Of course, their, uh, <laughs> their draft board might change quite a bit by the time that uh, this – the, the actual draft comes around because they don't know what's happening at their quarterback spot. Yeah. Um, I do know that once they do get a quarterback figured out, though, uh, offensively, who do they have over there? Uh, with DJ, DJ, is DJ Moore there? No. He just who, traded him yesterday. Who, Jesus. Well, they traded Oh, Moore. Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's gone. Yeah. But. Well, because I was trying to, first of all, just this is for real, y'all. I, I had the Giants. I did the Giants. I did the 
because I had New York. In my oh, I got you. <laughs> oh. so, no, no, was it a mistype? Just, totally fine. No, that's for that's that's on me. That's I might have mi- I might have mistyped no, it. No, no, it's on so, me. I'm trying to figure out what they need right now. Okay, offensive tackle, yeah. safety, interior offensive line, linebacker, wide receiver, quarterback, defensive line. I mean, it's it's uh, they need everything. Pretty I know, significant. Well, I know on the offensive side of the ball they were looking to improve because on the defense, yeah, that they have guys over there. It seems like they could build upon that, but it might be more emphasis on the uh, on the offensive side of the ball. So I would agree with that. Let me see. They've, mm. they've got some guys. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm trying to think of who I would feel like. Maybe, maybe a linebacker would go there. Do you do you like a linebacker that high at 12 or mm. at 13? No, actually, I don't. Yeah. Oh, saying it out loud scared me. Yeah, yeah. no, there's Dude. not a. I don't think there's a linebacker that deserves to go that high either. That high. What about a tight end? You could go tight end. Be, that would be high, but it would be a good pick because I like these tight ends a lot. But 13 Are is they, high for a tight end for the most part. Jesus, muffins. I um, I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm prepared to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, here's some names. Here's some names that are still available. Quentin Johnston, TCU wide mm-hmm. receiver. Uh, Broderick Jones, offensive tackle. Brian Branch, the safety out of Alabama. Jordan Addison. Wide receiver from USC. They're all available. They're definitely within the the, the scope of needs. Uh, if you wanted an edge rusher, Miles Murphy is still there. Lucas Van Ness from Iowa is still there. Um, I'm looking at some of these other names. Jordan Devin, Addison is a is a guy that I, to a lot of people is the is wide receiver number one, right? Yeah, some people Could, for sure. Yeah. Um, so let me go with Jordan Addison. Okay. Here. For the Jets. I'm not going to lie to you. If I were in this selection, if I were to have the same selection you just did, that would have been my pick. So I like that a lot. They've gone ahead and remade that receiver room. Yeah. yeah. You know, you got Garrett Wilson, Jordan Addison, Alan Lazard. I think uh, if they get a certain former Packer quarterback, or current one, I should say. Brett Favre is... Oh, because sorry. It, no, it's important to actually Don't add that, that we have former. It. Mama gave me eight of them flap checks. Mama gave me five of them flap checks. I want to stay hungry for the Crimson Tide. But yeah, what, Rodgers would be happy. What is it? What is what are y'all singing? Oh, uh, Brett Favre NFL Films. Yep, he uh, had a little ode to Keith Jackson. Wow! And so that's something that anytime <laughs> Favre's name is mentioned, at least on the G Bag Nation, it, it's a running bed from when I used to do the night show. I got I got to do that. For Thanks y'all for helping me through that because I, I prepare for something else. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Do not worry about it. All right, Zach, you're on the clock. 14 overall to the Patriots. I wonder if the Patriots would consider Will Levis here. There seems like there wow. is a divide in that in that, in that building Say that. with Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. I'm not going to put him there. I also think they Ooh. would consider B. John Robinson here. They like taking running backs high. Bill Belichick is a wild card there. I don't think they're going to do that either. They're, we've got a little bit of a run going here on receiver, but I'm not going to go wide receiver. A player that I think would be a Bill Belichick Type of pick here. I know what you're going to say. I think I see it too. Lucas Van Ness. I knew you, I knew you were going to do it. I knew you were going to do it. I feel like, you know, that's a guy that he he can have some fun with. He can move him around the defensive line. And I, I think that's a Patriot type of pick there. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> you can see him being a Patriot, you right? Know what? You know yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. Right. All right, so Lucas Van Ness is off the board. Edge rusher from Iowa at 14. Ooh, that makes things Mm. tough. I was kind of wanting him to slip to Green Bay here because I'm on the clock with Green Bay at 15. Dang, he was the second edge off the board? Yeah, he was. Yes, he was. I'm going to take, man, they need tight end. They need a wide receiver again. They've got a good wide receiver sitting there still with Quentin Johnston out of TCU. They did pick one last year, but they picked one in the second How round. How funny would it be if they go wide receiver? Yeah, as soon as they get rid of Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love, it's like, all right, now it's time to start getting some just receiver Just eliminate help. that first-round wide receiver <laughs> for the Packers. It's just not in their DNA. Ah, uh, you're right. <laughs> Give me uh, – I'm going to go with Nolan Smith, edge rusher Ooh, from Georgia. Good here. pick. I'm going to go with him there because they need some edge rush. They need some – Over uh, Miles Murphy there. That's I know. Miles yeah. Murphy's a guy that's sliding. He is sliding. I was looking at both of those names, but those that's who but I'm I can going. see that. Back to back edges. Maybe back to back to back, but we'll have to hit answer that when we come back. The commanders are on the clock at 16 overall. We'll continue with our first round mock draft on the draft show right after this. 
Hey, Cowboys fans, if you're looking for a full-time or part-time job, check out Liberty Tax, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. If you've got tax experience and want to help your community with their finances, you're the perfect candidate. No tax experience? We also offer in-person tax school courses locally. Liberty Tax has 79 locations across DFW and 2,300 offices nationwide. Learn more about our job opportunities at libertytax.com slash hiring or call your local Liberty Tax office today. Craving something flavorful? Replace that bloated burrito feeling with Smoothie King's new Power Meal Smoothies. With three delicious flavors like cinnamon banana, blueberry raspberry, and spinach pineapple, you can fill up on flavor, not calories. Each meal replacement smoothie is packed with 20 grams of protein, 7 grams of fiber, and 23 vitamins and minerals, all under 350 calories with 0 grams of added sugar. So next time you want something flavorful, swap fast food for a Power Meal smoothie. Order today on the Smoothie King app. Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Darren Woodson, former Dallas Cowboy player and Super Bowl champion. When I played in the NFL at a high level, I relied on my vision to see the field. As I started getting older, I noticed my vision wasn't as good, and I was getting frustrated from wearing my glasses all day. I went to Laser Care Eye Center, and Dr. G talked about all the options. Thanks to technology and Laser Care Eye Center, I can see near, far, and between. Don't fumble your vision any longer. Visit them at dfweyes.com and tell them Darren sent you. They got me back on my game. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite and 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Tax season can be more stressful than a last-second Hail Mary with the game on the line. Overcome your taxiety today with Liberty Tax, a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Book an appointment today at LibertyTax.com slash Cowboys. Welcome back into the Draft Show presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Miller time. We're doing our first-round mock draft give you a rundown of the first 15 picks. Anthony Richardson goes number one overall to the Panthers. Bryce Young, number two. Will Anderson, three. C.J. Stroud, four. Jalen Carter, five. Then the next five, starting with the Lions at six. Christian Gonzalez. Then Raiders take Joey Porter Jr. Big curveball at eight. Jalen Hyatt, wide receiver out of Tennessee, goes to the Falcons. Bears take Peter Skaronsky, the offensive tackle, to help protect for Justin Fields. Tyree Wilson goes number 10 to the hated Philadelphia Eagles overall at number 10. Uh, Titans take Paris Johnson Jr., followed by Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Texans. Jordan Addison to the Titans. I mean, excuse me, to the Jets. Lucas Van Ness to the Patriots. And then Nolan Smith, edge rusher from Georgia to the Packers. The Washington Commanders are on the clock and oh my goodness, look who's on the board for Washington. Gotta be kidding me. The quarterback Will Levis from Kentucky falls all the way down to pick number 16 and that is where they will run the card up in Kansas City Hmm. and turn it in. Will Levis they get their quarterback. Do you feel like that's a good fit, Brian? No, absolutely. And this is it's something that happens if you ever follow what the commanders do. They they will sit it, somehow, some way, players end up right in their spots. It, it's happened with defensive line with them. That's one of the reasons why all of a sudden they're taking like top two, three defensive tackles and the tackle ends up down at 17 and you're like, Damn, how do they do that? They just sit there and 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 make it happen. So, you know, Will Levis is a guy when you talk to people around the league could be the slider. This could be the one guy that slides and you know, I I had a decision to make about him with Vegas and I I felt like, you know, they'll probably they'll probably like another uh quarterback maybe a little bit better, grab a wide receiver, excuse me, uh, uh, the corner there with Joey Porter that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he's gone through some spots. Uh, with me, like with Vegas, he went through Tennessee, mm-hmm. and now here he is with the uh, the Commanders, and it makes a lot of sense for them to make that pick. All right, so you're back up on the board, Brian. You've got 17 overall with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, on the, the Steelers clock. need offensive line help. Broderick Jones, offensive tackle from Georgia, is going to be the selection here. Uh, he, he can play that left tackle spot. He's super athletic. 
Uh, you know, you can put him in the run game stuff. He's going to get movement. He gets a good pass protector. So Broderick Jones is going to be my pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's I like 17. it. Aisha, that's one of your guys, right? You really Ooh. like Broderick Jones. No, that's Brian. Not Brian? That's Brian. You don't like? Well, I, no, like I, do. I like Broderick Jones. Yeah, I do like him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, he ain't my dude, though. I, okay, but what do you like about him? What I, I mean, his movement. Yeah. How well he gets to the second level. Yeah. I mean, he he just he to me has he just has all the stuff to to like put it frankly. And again, you know how I am about offensive line at this point. Are you athletic? Yeah. Mm. Yep. And he's an athlete clearly. So yeah, he's gonna be able to. I feel like can you coach? That's how I feel. Like with 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 whatever team uh, team takes some of these guys, it's like can you teach the technique side of things and then let them just be athletes? And that's just. No, that makes sense. All right, so you're on the clock here with the Lions at 18. The Lions. The Lions. The, Lions, the okay. Detroit Lions. All right, so they struggled defensively to stop the run last year mm -hmm. uh, at several points. I, um, To me, I would be trying to attack the middle of their defense. So maybe you go ahead with the Kalaja Kansas? Ooh, that's a good pick. That is a good pick. I like that. I think that's a good yeah. range for him to come off the board. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a great fit for him, too, yeah. because he's got an edge rusher on one side, a young edge rusher in Aiden Hutchinson. You talk about the po possibility of him kind of combining with him, Zach. I think that's a good fit. I do, too. Uh, and, and I think along there, they've now made a couple of good picks uh, when you when you talk about, as you mentioned last year with Hutchinson. And now yeah. you have Kalijah Kansi, who not only can play the run, but he can get pressure in the middle of that. And they took their line. corner with Christian Gonzalez early. That's two great picks for, for the Lions, for in my Pittsburgh. opinion. Mm -hmm. From Pittsburgh. Oh, from, from, Pittsburgh. from Pittsburgh. Hey, you got the school. Beamer. Very nice. Go. All right, Beamer. there you go. <laughs> All right. Zach's on the board with the Bucks at 19. So I've uh, seen the Bucks might have a liking to a certain corner, but there's a player here that is slid that on my board is too good to pass up. Okay. And that would be Miles Murphy. I think the consideration here, you have Murphy, you've got Devin Witherspoon, and then even Emmanuel Forbes is a guy that I've, I've seen that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have an affinity for. But – I don't think you can pass on Miles Murphy if he's here. And what made Tampa Bay so good was their pass rush. I don't think and, – and everybody needs an edge, right? Right. Uh, they were able to bring back Dean at corner, so I don't think that's as glaring. I, I don't think you can pass up Miles Murphy if he's on the board this late. It's the fourth edge rusher in the last six picks. Now, this is a good draft for that, right? We talked about edge being one of those, those – one of the prime parts of this draft in particular. I like it a lot. All right, Seattle is on the board at 20. The Seahawks pick is going to Aisha. Do you okay. have any you have anybody on in mind? Mm, for a, We the, do have somebody who knows the Seattle Seahawks general manager in the room. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he, right. probably he won't say, he won't tell me anything. He'll take B. John <laughs> Robinson because he loves taking running backs. He, 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 would, he would have a hard time passing yeah. on well, B. John Robinson. I was going to say. He does have Kenneth Walker. Yeah, you know, he's, he does. He's I mean, he, they're, they're pretty set there. He's yeah. looking so. at edge. He's probably looking at he's looking at defensive line here, and he might add a wide receiver. Might mm. be something that he mm. would think about. So, if you got a, a tackle or an edge or a wide receiver that you have in mind, that might be the route you want to think about. He's one of those. He's uh, he's he's not afraid to take small school guys too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, even though he came from a program that, you know, in Green Bay a long time ago that was always about you better walk on water. You know, if you come through yeah. a small school guy. But uh, man, he's got he's got a couple of choices he can make here. I'm trying to figure out what they did not do well last year. Seattle. They did not defensively. They were they were average. Uh, bad. And secondary the, was pretty. The good. The secondary was good. They hit on t a couple of, of good picks last year in the yeah. secondary with Brian out of Cincinnati, and then our uh, UT San Antonio guy who was absolutely awesome. Well, the I free. mean, I mean, it might be blasphemous. However, there's a lot of comps. Of Zay Flowers to Ty Lockett, who's getting Ooh, older. Yeah, that's a okay. good. That, that no, would be. I, that I would, would see that, man. That's... So, um, let's. Wow. Well, yeah. Let's go Zay Flowers. Wow. Yeah. I like it. Makes a lot of sense. John would do something. Absolutely do something. Like that. <laughs> I mean, because Ty, I mean, no, he's it's, right. It's really, you're, the no, fact that Ty Lockett right. is like he seems timeless in how sure. he plays, but if you can get the next guy like him and then obviously Gino is there for a little bit longer mm -hmm. now get him a guy that's really QB friendly yeah 
Okay. I like that a lot. I like it. All right, the Chargers on the clock after Miami forfeits the number 21 pick. It is Los Angeles on the board, and Brian has the Chargers selection. Okay, the Chargers uh, looking at wide receivers or looking at offensive tackles or looking at tight ends and defensive linemen here. I feel like this is where – and this is the determination whether you feel like which tight end is the best one. Mm. And I know on my board, Michael Mayer is that guy. On other boards, you will see it. It's the Utah guy. I'm going to just – I'm going to gut it here and say that they like Michael Mayer okay. as their tight end. I, I kind of feel like this is the range where people are starting to talk about maybe when the first tight end will go – 21, 22, 23, somewhere. Maybe in the first, I mean, even tight ends going down, everybody's talking about Dallas at 26 with tight ends. So I think we're in that range right now. I'm going to take Michael Mayer, tight end Notre Dame uh, for the Los Angeles Chargers uh, with pick 21. Any truth to the fact that they, the Chargers were kind of interested in Dalton, Dalton Schultz? Well, just because of Kellen Moore, uh, Kellen Moore being yeah. the OC there. Yeah. So that, maybe you do get. Yeah. A similar guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. A similar guy. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, no, similar. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. you think about some of the young quarterbacks in the game right now that are having a lot of success. What do they all have in common? They have good co- or good tight ends to kind of pair with them mm-hmm. to go with. I mean, look at. Be a great pick for Herbert. Yeah. It, I think it would. it would help out Justin Herbert no doubt. a whole yeah. lot, especially in the system that's run by fellow former Cowboy offensive coordinator. Kellen Moore. All right, the Ravens on the clock. Aisha, you better make a smart pick because the uh, the Baltimore Ravens always make a smart pick. Do Very they? smart pick. Yep. Do they always? It's a good drafting team. Good yep. drafting team. Uh, we're going to look up just just a, a precursor to what's going to happen on draft day and throughout draft weekend. We're going to look up and we'll be like, wow, that player is really good. Where did yeah. he just go? And it's going to be the Baltimore. Ra- Ravens. It's going to be the Baltimore. Ravens do it all the time. Good drafted team. Corner, uh, wide receiver, cornerback, running back, edge. Kind of the directions that I think that they're looking here right now. A player that just screams Raven to me that's still available here is Brian Branch. Okay. Versatile. The safety from Alabama. That's fair. I just think that I could see them loving Brian Branch possibly if he's there on the board. It's something that they're thinking about when you start to talk about, you know, what's the quarterback situation? What's that going to be? I mean, they probably can't address that right there, but safety makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah. What what does J.K. Dobbins look like? What does his situation look like moving forward? Because there is a B. John Robinson yeah, sitting there. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I mean, Dobbins is a guy that can't stay healthy. When he plays, he's really good. Hey, but they've had issues there overall. I could see them kicking the tires on Bijan here. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Like, which is going to be the team that says, you know what? We're pulling the trigger. Maybe, it is, it, Maybe it is Baltimore with how much they – like to run the ball. Right. And they got some uncertainty at quarterback. They as well always right take now. the best player. They do. And on, on their board, when you start to talk about it, he's the one to me that it, right now, if you look at it, he's probably got the least amount of holes. Uh, you know, with, yeah. the, with Branch, and you could talk about Branch, uh, Deontay uh, Banks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, you talk about him, Cam Smith, I Witherspoon. Mean, yeah. I mean, there's. What there's about Quentin Johnston out of TCU? Uh, See, they, 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 need they need some wide receiver, receiver. But for whatever receiver. reason, they never address it. No, you're right. So, I mean, uh, you're right. They. I think that'd be a great pick for them. Yeah. But the best player, I think, on all of our boards now it's would Bichon. be Bijan, right? It is yeah. Bijan. Yeah. You, I, um, he wouldn't be I know, for you? I, no, I think it, it would be him, but I just wonder, any other year, like before, I think I would be like, yeah, they're going to go. They would go running back. Just, okay. But because of what's happening with Lamar and there be an uncertainty, you don't know if they're going to be trying to maybe stray away from being such a run 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 heavy mm. you know um often so no i i you you mentioned brian branch i was gonna go with the db um in general for them mm-hmm. because i feel like that's a need for them it is quarterback cornerback is a definite need for them i think mm. oh okay i'm gonna do it some some teams have brian branch playing corner yeah including yeah. I, I believe the one across the way yeah i think they look at him i have as him as a corner yeah Let's go with I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a switch it up. Let's go with Ooh. Deontay Banks. Okay. Ooh, okay. From Maryland. Guy in their backyard. Has, I think he also has that attitude um, yeah. that a lot of the Ravens players kind of have on the defensive side of the ball. That gritty type of you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Everybody that wants Bijan Robinson to come to Dallas takes a nice sigh of relief because. He's still available with three picks till the Cowboys. Vikings are on the clock, and that means Zach Wilchuk's on the clock. I am uh, going to do something a little crazy. Do it. 
Hendon Hooker, quarterback out of Tennessee. Holy cow! But yeah, where? I've where? Uh, I've been reading the Vikings are quarterback hunting right now, and I've seen some some stuff about Hendon Hooker going to the Vikings, and I don't think that that comes out of nowhere without there being a little bit of smoke. Wow. And if they can't move up to go get a quarterback, you've got Kirk Cousins in the final year of his deal. I think this will be the last year he's there. You can let Hooker develop. Be healthy. You get the fifth-year option on him. Vikings are going to do something a little wild here. I'm going to have them take the fifth quarterback that we've seen go in the first round. Okay, and the Jaguars are going to take another Cowboys target, potentially. Dalton Kincaid is going off the board, and he's going to go help out uh, that Jacksonville bunch at tight end. Uh, Giants are on the clock. Zach, I'm going to give you that pick from Bobby. Hello. Okay. The Giants also probably could use a corner. Uh, and I think that the best one left right now for me would probably be Forbes. I think they go with the more physical player, and uh, let's give them Devin Witherspoon mm. out of Illinois. I do. I am surprised he he lasted this. Me long. too. Yeah. Who yeah. Witherspoon? Yeah. 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 But I but I do think there is some interest there in Forbes though. Yeah, I think there would be too. Giants, yeah. For the Giants. I think they're surprised that Witherspoon got this far. Same. Yeah. I think they're looking at this and they're saying, well, heck, we, we you know, with Forbes, they're probably thinking that Witherspoon is not going to get to right. them. And so that they're 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 probably like they're doing cartwheels in that war room right now. Who'd you have going to Jacksonville? I had Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid. Oh, yeah. God, what a good pick. Who's their other tight end? Jeez. Who's their other tight end? They had love uh, them. Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram yeah, has been balling out for them mm-hmm. too. He hey. played really well. Yeah. They still they could use a tight end. Greedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Dalton Kincaid and, and Evan Ingram. You think about what Trevor Lawrence could do with that? That'd be fun. Yeah, it would be. It'd be like a the Dallas Goddard Zach Ertz kind of right. combo. Gosh, that's juicy. All that's, right. The Cowboys Dallas Cowboys. Spot. The Dallas Cowboys are on the clock. We're gonna answer who they're taking when we come back. Brian will have the official final say, but we turn into a war room with more of the draft show right after this. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com is one of the most trusted ways to buy, sell, and trade crypto. Whether you're always on the go or stay closer to home, Blockchain.com is just a few taps away. Put the power of crypto in your pocket so no matter where you are, you can trade on your terms and build a crypto portfolio to fit your life. For crypto pros, rookies, and anyone in between, Blockchain.com makes it easy to own a piece of the future. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. In a stressful world, Lincoln provides balance and calm amidst the chaos by creating sanctuaries that move you through the world with ease. Our vehicles make your time richer and more uplifting with human-centric design, intelligent technology, and powerful performance. As the official luxury vehicle of the Dallas Cowboys, driving a Lincoln is just another way to show your team pride. Experience our full lineup of luxury vehicles, including the Corsair, Aviator, Navigator, and Nautilus at Lincoln.com. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite and 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pre-game sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel, attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls? With Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Cowboys fans, stay ready for your spring break adventures with Cowboys Nation Essentials. Visit your local pro shop or log on to shop.dallascowboys.com. A fanatics experience and discover travel accessories, staycation must-haves, and a whole lot more. Welcome back to the Draft Show where the Dallas Cowboys are on the clock at 26 in the first round of the 2023 Dallas DallasCowboys.com draft show mock draft. All right. Here are some of the names that were recently taken. Will Levis to the Commanders, Broderick Jones to the Steelers, Kalijah Cansey to the Lions, Miles Murphy to the Bucks, Seahawks take Zay Flowers, 
Michael Mayer goes to the Chargers. Deontay Banks goes to the Ravens. Hendon Hooker, quarterback from Tennessee, goes to the Minnesota Vikings, the backup potential his, or I guess that's the replacement potentially for Kirk Cousins. Get that fifth year on him too, by the way. Yes, you do. Dalton Kincaid goes to the Jags. Devin Witherspoon to the Giants. And now the Cowboys at 26 have a number of players, including B. John Robinson, still on the board. Brian, when you're picking this late in the first round, and we heard it from Will McClay, we've heard it from yourself, we've heard it from pretty much everybody that we've talked to, you always want to look for first round grades. Mm -hmm. How many do you have left on your board? Four. Who are they? Robinson. Uh, Gibbs, Wright, and Johnston. So Johnston, the TC wide receiver, mm -hmm. Wright, the tackle from Tennessee, Robinson, the runner from Texas, Gibbs, the runner from Alabama, would be the four first round guys that I have left on the board. Oh God! And so three three offensive guys and a defensive guy. Yeah. So you know, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, to Excuse me, Excuse me, all four of those are offensive. Guys. Yeah. To me, I, I'm I'm in that mode right now where the best player on my board would be Bijan Robinson. I don't know if he would be the best player on their board. I I'm I'm not phobic about position and saying a running back and it's devalued. I'm not either, especially at this I, point not in the not draft. at this point because I only I only have like 20 first round grades, right? And so I do have I do have some guys left, which I, I think is very, very encouraging to me. Uh, Hyatt helped me. Richardson helped me. Nolan Smith helped me. Banks helped me. You know, as far as Kincaid, those guys, Flowers, those guys kind of helped me because on my board they were all like second round guys. Mm -hmm. So by by the cowboy by other teams taking, and I'm not saying that all the picks that I just named aren't good players. They are. They all were. No, more, you can you can go ahead and yeah. say that they were terrible picks. No, no. <laughs> what not, are these schmucks doing? No, no, not Tell at all. Me not how a, you feel? No, not at all. I mean, I feel like to me, like just on my personal board, that's you know, I'm happy. I'm happy that all those second round guys on my board went. And I wonder if the Cowboys are going to be thinking the same thing. Oh, we caught a break here because uh, a Hendon Hooker went early. Mm -hmm. Oh, we caught a break because Richardson went. Oh, that helps us too. You know, maybe you only had three first round grades for uh, quarterbacks: Stroud, Young, Levis. Maybe, maybe you only have two. Maybe they don't like. You know, maybe they don't think Levis is a first round guy. You know, so I, I think that you definitely got some help if you're a Cowboy. On at least on my board, mm -hmm. I got some help. Okay, I'm the Cowboys have proven to me that they will take the best player. They will take the best player. And when you when you look at all the tape, when you evaluate, regardless of the position, that guy at the University of Texas is the best player on this board. They could use they could use they could absolutely use Johnston, the wide receiver from TCU, you know. But I don't think they have to force that, you know. They could use you know Wright. We'll see. I think they want to keep. I think they want to keep uh, Tyler Smith playing. Left a uh, uh, left tackle. Right. I don't think they want to. I think one of the guards would be more in play here than, yeah, than Darnell exactly. Wright out of Tennessee. I, I don't see, but on my board, like I say, now we have to think about their board. Torrance, Avia. I'm going to sit here and believe that the Cowboys didn't think that Bijan Robinson was going to be here when they were going to pick. And I, I think this is like to me, yeah, you you've you've got a one year deal. I mean, the Pollard just signed his tag today. You know, yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. You get a one-year deal for him. Mm -hmm. they, what are the chances of getting a long-term deal? We'll see. Maybe you don't want to pay long-term deal with him. I think Bijan Robinson coming in here would be a absolute just a home run for this offense. I'm with you running and, the football and the way he I did. I can defend the pick. I'm not with the oh my gosh you took Zeke at fourth over. There's a big difference between taking a guy in the top five and then taking him at 26. Yeah. You're not paying a ton of money. You can ride out that five the fifth year option with a running back. You're going to get the best years out of him. And do we forget just how good Ezekiel Elliott was at the beginning of his career? That was a smash home run pick. Now, you can question the doubling down and giving him the second contract. That's totally fair. But on his rookie deal, Ezekiel Elliott entered the NFL and was the best running back in football. B. John Robinson can do the same. And you're talking about the guy that's going to touch the football 20 plus times a game, impact player. You can player. throw him the ball, too. And stuff. Yep. You can, you can do He's a, lot a weapon. Of, you can do a lot of things with this guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand the card in thinking that the Cowboys are going to take the best player on their board. But know that they know that this thing. I, they they're what just happened is they got some guys along the way that allowed them to at least have four names on my mm -hmm. board to look at, and more importantly, it's either the wide receiver 
or the running back. And so I'm going to take Bijan Robinson here. If you guys have any other thoughts about that, no, you know, feel I'm, free I'm to, fine with it. Feel free to chime in. Aisha, I want to hear your thoughts on it real uh, quick. What? Um, on what? Um, on Bijan. On them taking him? Yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah. I mean, would you take which? Who, would you take Johnston, the wide receiver? If you had, if you had a pick, if you had a pick between, say, Johnston, Robinson. Uh, Breesy, the the defensive tackle from mm-hmm. Clemson, maybe Sanders, the linebacker from uh, Arkansas. Arkansas, but you know, did, did, did Branch didn't go yet either, right? No, Brian so Branch. Brian is still Branch. There. I mean, He's we, still, we talked about him. He could play corner. He could play safety. Me personally, I I think that I would try and replace Malik Hooker. You know, if if you wanted me to play, I mean, if you wanted sure. maybe to play a real true, maybe a free safety, that he might be the guy. You know, they might be able to wait. I mean, they might be able to wait into the second or third round, fourth round to draft a running back. Well, they certainly could. But I just don't know how you pass on a talent like that. I just don't. I don't no. think you do. No. The, the, the conversation here is if he's not there. If he's not there, where would you go? If he's Let's not there, I would, I, I would take John. I would take John. Yeah, I think too. I would, too. Me, yeah. too. I would take the wide receiver from TCU. Well, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I mean, good I mean with it? It, it, what, what's your biggest your biggest concern about this pick? What would be your biggest concern? What, would be Sean? Yeah. yeah. I don't really have any really serious concerns about them taking a running back. Any pause? Their... No pause? No. No. I, I guess more so what gives me the uncertainty is just in what ways are they going to use him? Granted, I think he can do a lot of everything, but to maximize – his potential, how are they going to use him? Mm-hmm. That's that's my thing. Is uh, We don't have no real clarity on that because we don't know what this offense is going to look like now. Right. So for me, that's the only thing I struggle with is I think he can do it all, but just they they can't do what they did with Tony Pollard. Like, he can do so much. And if you are going to take him there, even though it's the first-round pick, like you got to do everything that you can to get him involved. So that's just my thing is what what is the – what is the vision for him? And if I knew that, I feel like I would be like, heck yeah. But See, I'm like, I'm yeah. cool with it. Yeah. Uh, under the under, Okay, say if, if Kellen Moore was still the offensive coordinator. Absolutely not. I, would, I, I probably wouldn't take this guy. Absolutely, You're probably right. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Because we, we sat there and watched Tony Pollard. Like, I really honestly, last year, I felt like the national media kind of helped us out a little bit. <laughs> because after what happened at the end of the season, everybody started c- catching on to the fact that Tony Pollard wasn't involved in this offense. It used to just be us. Like, right. yeah. why isn't he out there, whatever. And then after after last season, after the San Fran game, everyone started talking about it. And I don't Where know were the if touches? That, and I don't know, yeah, and I don't know if that helped at all, but it shouldn't have took that, yo. Mm-hmm. Yep. It shouldn't have took that. And so with Bijan and him being so special to, like I said, to capitalize everything you can get, especially as a receiver, whatever the case may be, I want to make sure that he's getting, you're going to do. So I would, I guess I would like to know the plan. Yeah, no, personally. that makes a Before. whole lot of sense. It really under, does. under the Kellen Moore administration, you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying this, I'm not taking B. John Robinson because, because the head coach says he wants to run the ball more because I think he's not telling the truth there. Yeah. I think he's. I think he's setting it up to like. I'd like to run the ball, but he's going to end up throwing the ball. Yeah, uh, yeah it's going to be tough. To be bombing it. This <laughs> is this is a scenario where it's shown just how easily one he could be off the board because he could have been taken at any of those spots, yeah. like you said, with the the second round picks that were selected beforehand. He could have been taken, but it also shows just how easily he can fall. Absolutely, to six. Yeah, and he's there. So Bijan Robinson's the pick. Somebody call Brian Anger. He needs that number five shipped to him very quickly. <laughs> All right. The Buffalo Bills are on the clock. Let's fly through these final five picks because gotcha. we've got a show coming up after us. Aisha, you're on the clock with the Bills. Uh, So let me see. So the Bills, from my understanding, looking into some of their stuff, they need – they definitely need somebody opposite of – they're not getting enough opposite of uh, – Diggs. Diggs right now. Mm. So maybe a Quentin Johnson is, is that guy. They would guy jump up yep, and they down. Would. Yep. They would absolutely be doing mm-hmm. backflips if Quentin Johnston fell to them. All right, the Bengals on the clock. That is Zach Wolchuk. Uh, we don't know what's going down with their offensive tackle situation. I know that technically Lyle Collins is still there. Mm-hmm. Jonah Williams might get traded. You got Darnell Wright that has fallen into your lap. I'm going to give them Darnell Wright the tackle out of Tennessee. That's a really good that's pick. That's good because they dang yeah. sure need a tackle. Yeah, they yeah, do. That's a really good pick. Keep Joe Burrow standing up. 
All right, New Orleans is on the clock here. I've got New Orleans. Man, this is tough. I feel like I, everything just dried up for me right right as we were getting into that. Those last four picks, Witherspoon, Robinson, Johnston, and Wright, right before the New Orleans hits. I think New Orleans is going to take a chance here on a guy like Brian Breesey out of okay. Clemson. I think you're going to mm-hmm. take that shot here. He's going to help that or that defensive line. That's probably their number one need. I'm going to take Breesey here, and it's the back end of the first round. Yeah, I think that's a good spot for him to fall. And then, Brian, you've got the Eagles and you've got the Chiefs. Okay, uh, the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles are going to take. Uh, Don't say it. Oh, this hmm. is interesting. That corner. Okay, the, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to take Emmanuel Forbes, the cornerback uh, out of Mississippi State. That would be a. I knew he was going to say just it. Just a crusher. Yeah. I'm hurt. But it's a good pick. Yeah. And he's the best corner left. I think they're going to take Emmanuel Forbes. The Kansas City Chiefs are looking right now at a situation where I think they're going to. Edge, tackle, wide receiver, defensive line real quick, Brian. I'm going to think they're going to take Dewan Jones, the massive tackle from Ohio State. I like that. Yeah. I'll yeah. Go help him out Because they bit. just lost Wiley, their yeah. right tackle. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think Dewan Jones. Just the, paid some money up front, too. Like, right. That, that would be a good pick. Yeah, That'd be a absolutely. Good pick. All right, that does it. That's all 31 picks of the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft. Of course, the Dallas Cowboys selecting B. John Robinson at pick number 26. Lots of great names still on board, though, as we go into the second round. That's how it's going to be. At first, I felt bad about my Falcons pick when I picked picked, uh, Jalen Hyatt. Hyatt. But then I thought to myself, it's the Falcons. Yeah, it's, it's the Falcons. They might pick this. No, the, 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 thing, the thing is that that's the great thing. I think you both you did. I think the pick with that pick, and then also the pick of of Hendon uh, Hooker. Of Hendon Hooker, you just don't know what teams are going to do. How they got this board set up and stuff. So I thought that was instead of saying chalk, I think you you, you kind of put it together pretty good. Yeah, lots of fun. I had a blast with it. We'll be back next Wednesday with the entire crew to break it all down. Maybe we'll hear some more little rumblings of how that first round could go. <laughs> (laughs) by the the time that comes around. For Chris Beam in the back, Brian brought us Zach Wolchuk, Aisha Morrison. I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from the draft show. We'll see you next Wednesday. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?